our industry, our management, they have no memory. They have no memory of what happened. Because I'm sure that similar accidents will happen again and again and again. Deepwater Horizon. Now, 11 people were killed, unfortunately. And the slide was made a week ago. And then we were told in Europe it will cost 22 billion. Now they are up to 50 billion. And I don't think it's, it will be finished. There will be more. So it's huge. Especially the environment damage. So summary is... The failures that we are building in our plants. And I know here in Brazil, I have done my homework. You also had some disasters. You also killed some people. Now, if you know one of them, it will come to your heart and you will start to understand why we have to take it more serious when you write a specification for a safety. There is a reason for that. 11 people lost their life yet again. 11 families are destroyed because maybe of some stupid certification because maybe of some single layer of protection, but that's again the lesson that we should remember. Environment. Plenty of pictures on the environment pollution. It is just huge. Can you imagine if Coca Cabana beach would be full of oil? Your beautiful beach, which I really like, especially on Sunday when the game was on with Brazil, but when it would be full of oil, it would not be so nice anymore. So think about these things. And again, the first report is already out. There was a professor at the un university. He launched a preliminary report where we can start to learn from. But we have to be willing to learn. And that's the whole issue. When I came to this session, Nigel has asked me and Westcon has asked me if we could give a picture on how safety is moving in the future. Now, when you look at all these timelines here, we had 1974, and Civizo was 1976. Immediately, there are some organizations bringing out certain guidelines. The first Convey report was released by HAZ, that's Health and Safety Executive. In that document were very clear um, inf information. When you store some chemical hazards, there is a danger. So you have to be careful what you actually do with this. We will not go through everything, but my summary is that every accident, there are some organizations waking up and actually making reports to give us some help to us engineers to build our plants safer in the future. I took out a few of the key events timeline. So one is the Flixborough in England and Civiso, as already said, that was the HSE and the Civiso directive came out. Here the Bhopal immediately was coming out with the control of industrial major accidents. That's here the CMAC. And there the COMAC is the uh, control of major accident hazards. That also came out for the industry that we should follow that when we are building danger materials in our plant. BP Texas City, Bunsfield, all this has an amendment. And here was a um, quantified risk assessment method released that people should try to quantify, to try to identify what risks do they have on their new design or on existing plans. So when you look at these KPIs or the key performance indicators, I just list here most of them. And of course, I highlighted my domain of experience for the last years is training people to bring them competency up to the level where we think they have proven to understand what safety is. But it goes from employee participants, process hazard analysis, trade secrets, hot work permits, incident investigation, pre-startup safety reviews, process safety information, operating procedures, compliance audits, mechanical integrity, management of change, the salary, the money, end of the month on your check is directly linked to the KPIs. And if I give an example, have a product loss, and that was the smallest KPI, from 20,000 euros, their salary is affected. And I can tell you on that plant, they're getting serious. Because the top manager, his bonus scheme, end of the year, will not be millions of dollars. It may be no bonus. And he may find himself another job. Look at the accidents that we have seen in the past. Look at this poor Tony, and I forgot his last name, the manager from BP, which was on TV a couple of times. He will not long 
be with BP in the future. I'm sure he can clean up his mess and he can find himself another job, probably with no bonus. But that is reality. So when you have management understanding how they can measure this and they can have incentive for the people achieving safety, that could be a way forward. Challenges for the future for our process safety implementation. Well, as you may have heard me saying, the joke about the telephone is actually a reality. 20 years ago, or 30 years ago, or 35 years ago, when I was working in the field, the instrumentation were pneumatic, the instrumentations were quite simple, very, very easy to maintain and to understand. Today, technology with modern software inside your field transmitters, with field burst uh, communication, with diagnostic-based systems, all this technology is getting more and more complex. So there is more and more training required for people to know how they can use this. So the process control and safeguarding equipment are more and more complex. Thereby, we are also increasing maybe newer risk. So my summary is purely there is only one way forward for the next 20 or 30 years, as Nigel would like to put it. It will all be down to the competency of people. It will all be down to the know-how and the experience. And yes, you are right. We are very afraid for the future because we know that the younger generation may not have enough time to get all this information in, to read all these reports, to hear all this good engineering practice to make your plan safe. And in order to achieve this, we have to have some competency that every human being should start to follow, and that should become the de facto standard for the future, also here of this country of Brazil. When the people from Brazil will keep on ignoring good engineering practice and reports and don't have the correct competency, you may one day lose your own life or some of your family, which I certainly do not wish. So have competent people working and helping you keeping your plant functional, safe, and as we like to say, non-stop, that's our final aim. With this, I'm finished. Thank you for your listening. If you have any questions or answers, 